Welcome, young Kokiri, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where I shine a spotlight on weird little spots you might have missed in games you love. Today's tour takes us to The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and boy does this game start off strong with Kokiri Forest. It so effortlessly establishes a mood right off the bat. It's atmospheric. Compare it to Super Mario 64, a game I covered in a previous tour. It had environments with certain vibes, sure, but like... This is a level. What's the point of this building? Why is this here? Who's this guy? It doesn't matter, just collect the star and move on. This. This is a world. This shop exists to sell resources to its residents. This dude is cutting some grass. And this guy's name is Mido. Here's where he lives. Don't get me wrong, this is extremely rudimentary compared to the stuff you'd see in games today. There's no complex routine the residents follow, and the village area is pretty small, but it's taking that step towards believability. In a way, Kokiri Forest is similar to villages you'd see in a lot of older JRPGs. A shop, a couple people walking around, not enough beds for all those people, and a weird little quirk to make it stand out. In this instance, all the town's inhabitants are Kokiri, a childlike people that never age. That defining feature shapes the vibe of the area. It feels like a spot hidden away from the rest of the world. That's not to say that they don't communicate with other towns, as there's likely some line of dialogue I'm missing where it's stated they do, but for the most part, they seem to keep to themselves. In Link's house, there's various agricultural tools. You got a pile of hay here, not sure what that's for or why it's being stored in the only house located off the ground. This is something I notice in a lot of older games. There will be something that hints at the world being thought out. Like here, in Link's house, we have all these items that hint towards the Kokiri being into agriculture. But where is that? Where are the crop fields and animal pens? There's no indication as to where these tools would be utilized. Kokiri forest design isn't very functional. In the state the town is in right now, these people can't sustain themselves. They'd have to rely on other villages to supply them food. Shady Sands and Fallout? That's a starting town that could survive. They got a couple houses, a hospital, as well as a garden and animal pen. That's like the bare minimum a town needs to exist. That's not to say Kokiri Forest is bad for not having those things. In fact, I kind of like the vibe this version of Kokiri Forest gives off. It's very whimsical. It doesn't want you to get bogged down with the logistics of how the villagers survive day to day. Just soak in the aesthetics of this forest village, home to children that never grow up. Don't think about any of that realism nonsense. That's where Kokiri Forest succeeds. There are some kids doing some hard labor here and there, but for the most part, they're just hanging out. You don't get the feeling they're worried about where their next meal is going to come from or that they're constantly under attack. People here just enjoy life. At the bottom of the tree holding Link's house, there's a little carving. I always thought this was cute. My first thought is that this is hinting at the future fight with Ganon, but this drawing looks more like Godzilla than it does Ganon. Considering that, I don't think this is a reference to any monster or situation in the game. I like that. It's like the game has a little secret it keeps from you. Maybe this hints towards some religious belief of theirs. Maybe it's a story they tell around the campfire to rile each other up. Or maybe Link drew it on a whim one morning. Having little details like that, where you don't understand the full scope or purpose behind it, gives the world depth. A unique area inside Kokiri Forest is the Hole of Z, which is bizarrely named after the Z-targeting mechanic of the game. Do the Kokiri question why they have a spot named after a button on a Nintendo 64 controller? Regardless, crawl through the hole and you reach a tiny little maze. This is a weird area, right? I feel like I'm playing one of those really old dungeon crawlers, like Shin Megami Tensei. It's claustrophobic. In the boulder here, it just goes in a loop. What ethereal force guides this boulder along its path, never to stray from the square here and crash into this passageway? Who can say? This maze is home to the Kokiri Sword, a treasure that Link is supposedly borrowing, but I don't see him ever give it back. In fact, he keeps it in Majora's Mask. Maybe in one of the other timelines he returned it. It's funny thinking of this as an armory. Past a hole you have to crawl through and defended by a magical boulder is the super secret weapon of the Kokiri, a letter opener. 
I guess trouble is rarely a problem here. They'd rather keep such a dangerous weapon hidden away. The final point of interest in Kokiri Forest is the Eternal Deku Tree- oh. Much better. This little field is great. It's very empty compared to the main area of Kokiri Forest. It serves as great contrast between the two. In this side of the town, you have the hustle and bustle of everyday living. And over here is where the people come to do whatever it is they do with the Great Deku Tree. It's unsullied by any man-made structure. Getting up real close to him, you really understand the scale of the tree. It makes you feel like the kid you are at this point. Every time you come in here though, I bet you just run straight to and from the tree's mouth. But there's so much more to explore in here. Have you ever just hung out in the empty areas of the grove? It's such a calming place. And behind the tree? Of course I'm going there. They put this edge high enough so you can't just walk back. But me? I'm smart. With a bit of maneuvering you can sneak where the developers didn't want you to go. Now this is cozy. Link could hide here for days and nobody would find him. And there's so many sections, it's great here. The developers placed an object back here. Guess I'm not as smart as I thought I was. E either way, it's a cool place to hang out. Right outside of Kokiri Forest is the expansive Hyrule Field. Look at how much space there is here. It might not seem that big compared to modern games like Breath of the Wild, but this must have been mind-blowing back in the day. I remember the journey from Kokiri Forest to Hyrule Castle Town taking an eternity as a kid. In reality, it's only a minute or two walk, but it feels like an adventure. In a way, I kind of imagine this as an abstracted version of the actual Hyrule Field. The main thing that tips me off to that is the day-night cycle. Days only last two and a half minutes, while night is a minute and twenty seconds long. Obviously not as long as real life days, but it feels relatively short for a usual day-night cycle you'd see in other games. Maybe the short cycle could be explained by the fact that Link is actually traveling a much greater distance in the universe of the game. Think of it like Final Fantasy VII. In that game you have an overworld and it's heavily abstracted. Your character is scaled up and you walk around the continents as that character. You, the player, can walk across the world in a couple minutes, but it would take Cloud and Friends multiple days. Does that comparison make sense? Because it feels weird that all these places are so close together. You have Kakariko, Hyrule Castle Town, Lon Lon Ranch, and Kokiri Forest all within walking distance. I would imagine all these settlements would exist further apart if they were in a world built to scale. As for the field itself, whenever I need to get somewhere, I just beeline it straight to my destination. Let's take a trip off the beaten path and explore some lesser traveled areas of Hyrule Field. You exit Kokiri Forest and you're immediately given a path to follow to Hyrule Castle. But what if you go over here? What is this landmass? The only point of interest is this little spot Mavi draws your attention to, which, when you play the Song of Storms, reveals a regular old fairy. I obviously knew about the entrance to Zora's River, but I always come at it from this angle, never from the Kokiri Forest entrance. Here, it just looks like that isolated plot of land is part of the normal landmass. You can't tell that there's water surrounding it. What a weird spot. I talked about this concept in my Dark Souls video, but it feels like there should be something here. If not an entrance to a whole other area, then at least a grotto or a piece of heart. Like, why hide a singular fairy here? You can find those in abundance in fairy fountains. Whatever, moving on. Turning left from the entrance of Kokiri Forest is an area I literally never go to. I know Lake Hylia is that way, but same as the spot we just looked at, I always approach it from Hyrule Castle Town. This area freaked me out as a kid, solely because of these pineapple dudes. They fly into the air and charge at you with their spinning thorns or whatever. Even now I still don't like going over here. It kind of feels like a dangerous part of Hyrule Field that nobody goes to. This path would obviously see a lot of foot traffic between the major locations, considering Hyrule Field is on this side of the field, but over here is no man's land. Pineapples come to life and charge at anyone who dares to trespass on their territory. And they have a pretty big claim to land, look at all this. There's a similar open space on the other side of Hyrule Field, but I imagine players are much more familiar with this area. Something I just noticed is that the water here flows out directly from Hyrule Castle. 
It flows into a grate, which you can follow into Gerudo Valley, which leads into Lake Hylia. Neat little detail I somehow looked over all these years. Our next stop is Hyrule Castle Town, and I think it's time to talk about the pre-rendered backgrounds. It's been a while since I covered a game with a lot of them, that being Final Fantasy VII, the first tour I ever did. I'm looking forward to covering more games with them in the future, because I love them. They're representative of a very specific point in time where consoles could handle some 3D rendering, but not a bunch. So an environment was rendered into a flat 2D image and then paste it on top of the screen to give the illusion of a 3D world. Here you can see what the environment looks like without that pre-rendered image. But that's not how you're supposed to see it. Hyrule Castle Town is this upbeat, bustling town center. It greatly contrasts from your experience in Kokiri Forest, where you lived all your life up to this point. There's crowds, presumably just small enough to not have the frame rate dip too much. People and creatures running about. And there's so many buildings to enter. Some are more interesting than others like the guard building just outside of the town center. Not really sure why all this is here. The guard even instructs you how to pick up and throw pots. But I wouldn't do that. I never give in to destructive tendencies. Back in the market, you have Bomchu Bowling. This is my favorite interior of the market. It's just so goofy. You have all these neon signs lighting up the room in a weird way, as well as a jukebox playing some sort of joyful tune. It's truly reminiscent of a bowling alley. And the lady running the place, she's great. Oh, uh, okay, I'll just leave her alone. Heading out the back of Castle Town leads you to the actual castle. It's a nice area, and I wish you could explore it fully without having to worry about being caught by the guards. Look at these flowers. How nice. Sneaking inside the castle, I like the little guided camera angle it gives you throughout this section. Normally there's guards here, but we caught them on their lunch break. The fountains are weird. Look at the texture here, how it goes up and then back down. I guess that's supposed to be the water splashing? And this statue, what's the story behind this? Another little secret the game keeps from you. As the camera turns this corner, I notice the bushes don't have a texture on this side. I hope someone got fired for that blunder. The castle courtyard is great. A perfect, peaceful little spot to just soak in the atmosphere. The blue sky, green grass, and colorful flowers. It's so serene. And of course you have the easter egg paintings in here. Can't forget about those. I like the water surrounding the courtyard. And did you know you could go under the platform Zelda is standing on? How quaint. Lake Hylia is where we're going next. This is another area memorable for its scale. You know what I've never done? I don't think I've ever swam from one side of the lake to the other. I'm gonna do that. Huh. I don't have much to say about this location, I just think it's neat. I like these long rope bridges leading to this island with a singular tree. I like the tinier square island across from it. I like that you can climb on top of this lab and get a bird's eye view of the entire lake. Great spot. Before we reach our most important spot of the video, let's visit some other places, rapid fire. Near Lake Hylia is the fishing hole. Warning, this is a dangerously cozy spot. Entering here may make you want to spend an hour just hanging out and catching fish. Hidden at the back of Lon Lon Ranch is a tower with some cows. Hidden at the back of that is a secret room holding a piece of heart. 
I have no idea what this room is even supposed to be with the weird wall texture and hay in the middle, but I love it. Maybe a silo? I, I don't know. Lastly, there's the windmill in Kakariko. I think it's so funny that this place is just labeled as question mark when you enter. Like, why not call it a windmill? Look at Link go. Whee! Okay, time for the final, most important stop. If you're familiar with weird places in Ocarina of Time, I'm sure you know where I'm going. This is just wild. I actually can't believe this is a real place in the game. Most grottos look like this, just some normal cave underground. But this, how do you even describe this? It looks like an oil slick, or maybe crystals? I, I have no idea. And this doesn't seem like a naturally occurring cave. There's stone tiles on the ground as well as the ceiling. This whole room is so weird and alien. It's like it was taken out of a game with a completely different aesthetic and just dropped into Ocarina of Time. Bizarre. This video may be almost over, but we have so much more to cover. In the next episode, I will return to the land of Hyrule as we journey into the future to further explore this land we've become so familiar with. It'll take me a bit to get out, so in case you're watching this in the time before I do release part two, here's my tour of Final Fantasy VII. Or if part two is out, go watch that instead. Also, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Among other things, I post like a half hour video every two weeks of me rambling about a patron suggested topic. You'll love those. Probably. See you on the next Video Game World Tours.